Heathens, you shall pay for the death of our brother! You pay! For the death of our brother shall not go unavenged! Go unavenged! For brother Eli! For brother! Oh, sorry, I've messed it up yet. From the top! <laughs> Long Rest is another episode that was originally supposed to go in the second season. This episode is kind of inspired by like the whole Genji, I need healing meme. I need healing. But obviously this party doesn't have a healer, so how do they get up to 100%? They have to long rest. What are you doing? Long rest. The boss is literally through there, let's go! So in Long Rest, Evandra just wants to get to that fight. She is a fighter, she is born for those big boss fights. So she gets a bit frustrated with these other party members and their spell slots and needing to recoup that with all of that rest. She just wants to go for blood. Long Rest! Long Rest. Nixie is a sorcerer and She's not very strong, she's not very skilled. The only thing that she really has going for her is her fire spells. So if she is even one spell slot low, it could be the difference between the group making it out and the group dying. Long Rest was shot in one of the largest graveyards in the Southern Hemisphere and we did the entire episode in a memorial rest house. It was a heritage listed place, so we had to take certain measures to not damage the property, which most film crews end up doing. We didn't know. So a funny thing that happens at cemeteries now and then is a funeral procession. And sometimes your bathroom is away from the set. So on one or two lovely occasions, People at a funeral looked up and saw satanic cultists in ghoulish face paints just casually walking past. I made all of the cultist costumes in this episode and the design was really pulling from like that holy orders of a dark god or a dark power. So the pattern that I pulled from was actually a Jedi robes pattern and I made that all out of a beautiful red velvet and trimmed that in gold. But what was fantastic was once we had the robes and the mask together, it made our three cultists pretty much indistinguishable from each other. You shall fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Normally when we're filming One For All, we put the party first and get all their scenes out of the way and then put poor Kendall at the end of the day and he's often forced to squeeze out lines in an unfair amount of time, but we decided on this day we'd flip it up because he had two accomplices and we had a lot of fun just playing around with their cultist routines as they entered from the portal. For brother Eli! For brother... Wait, I'm brother Eli. What? Yeah, that's who are you? I'm brother Michael. I think we're going to do brother uh, Eli and brother Nicholas, not brother Michael. Did I say Michael? You said Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall ran with his own. Good job, Kendall. Yeah. <laughs> From the beginning of One For All, we've always had this gimmick that Kendall plays all of the NPCs. And I think like after a few episodes, we'd finished that joke. Once we did baby Kendall sucking Mama Kendall's milk trucks. <laughs> like, how do we... <laughs> big mummy milkers. <laughs> like, Kendall's big mummy milkers. Like, how do we, how do we top that? I think we just made that choice to save us a whole pain in the ass with production. And let's just get Kendall on as like the main NPC for each episode. Today we're shooting Long Rest. I'm playing a cultist. Um, should come quite naturally to me. I was raised in a cult. Uh, it was called Catholic Church. In Long Rest, I got joined by the lovely Eli Gallagher and Nicholas Collins, who were cast on their ability to look kind of like me. <laughs> so the three of us are playing multiple groups of cultists who are stepping through the portal at different times to try to figure out what has happened to the previous cultists that have stepped through the portal. Are you guys coming on? I'll just go then. So even though they all look the same, they are supposed to be different cultists and we try to use different accents for each different group, our different poses. Oh, dare to fire the holy temple. Now try it, Alan. You dare to fire the holy temple. 
I kind of. You want that one? Ah. Oh. <laughs> you dare to file our holy temple? I kind of dig it. For long rest, the blocking was meant to be really simple. You know, the party run in after the cultists that's run in, and then you've just got your shot reverse shot. But we were running pretty late on the day because we were doing day for night, and we had actually blocked out all of the sunlight through the windows by hanging up black curtains, but we didn't have enough to do the entire room. So what we did was just shot everything one direction and then flipped everything changed the actors' placements and kept shooting in the same direction. So that saved us a lot of time having to reset, but it was really confusing for everyone orientation-wise. One of my favourite things looking back at this episode is how hard it is to tell that we were shooting the same direction the whole day. We had to get the cultists in there early. We had to do all our stuff to an eyeline. You shall die! Morning, you first. I didn't get to see what the rest of the cast did till actually watching the episode. And it's amazing how much it lines up. I forgot that we shot the same direction and redressed at the same time. It looked seamless to me. Then I had to remember, like, I wasn't actually acting in front of the other actors the whole time. I was looking at a wall. So one thing that I've always really loved is the group dynamic. We've already got so much good banter between the characters and, like, how they play off each other. <sighs> Something smells crispy. No time for breakfast. Let's go fight that boss. I really loved the fact that in this episode we got to explore more of that. I loved that we added little like snippets of like almost like an update as to like where they are relationship wise. Did I hear sniggering? Who the f was that? That was me. Oh, really? I'm sorry. <laughs> Antrius was really doubling down on his vanity this episode with his um, strange mirror, which comes out of nowhere. All to do with the fact that he's probably a lot older than the rest of the party. Hey, Nixie, how old do you think I look? I don't know, like 50? Long rest! What? As a human, I'd probably be playing him as about 35 to 40, or how I imagine a 35 to 40 year old bard would feel, which is constantly self conscious. You could use some beauty sleep. So we had a lot of fun improvising some different scenes for the montage of waking up and long resting. We had a few props to play with, like knives and swords and even cucumbers. The sad part about the whole cucumber concept is that I often request cucumber snacks and now I had to use them on screen. So there's a small chance that we were going to run out. That was a prop. Thanks a lot, man. Prop I think someone said bite it and I did and I ate like a sweaty cucumber which is not something I expected to do on screen but eh, it's full of surprise and regrets. <laughs> up at the end of long rest it was so hectic and the cemetery gates close at nine o'clock so we were operating to this strict deadline to wrap and pack all this equipment and get out of there so we were in pitch black darkness it also started like pouring down rain at that same time so that was really fun but we were just rushing to get everyone out of this cemetery before they get locked in for the night that's a wrap on Woo! season three season, oh my god season three that's a wrap get out of here six episodes I can't believe the party killed another one of my NPCs. Now I need to think of a new one. Where will you go to get some inspiration? Well... Raid Shadow Legends has a whole world of amazing looking champions, all from their own unique faction, and those factions have a lot of lore. With that much lore, you might finally be able to give your NPC an interesting backstory. Here's an interesting backstory. Shut up. Here's a quick dive into the first faction you meet, the Banner Lords. The Banner Lords are basically medieval knights with a massive kingdom in the west of Teleria. They're arrogant and warlike and believe themselves to be on the side of good. But the orcs, Ogren, Skinwalkers and Lizardmen would disagree. The lands of the Banner Lords were taken from the non-humans by force and kept through centuries of persecution with the help of the Sacred Order. Now, with the Banner Lords weakened by the wars of their king, the time may be at hand for these races to right an ancient wrong by whatever means necessary. But tell me more about their over 300 unique champions. Well, they have over 300 unique champions. I like to just summon them and see what I get. Look, I got Athel. And this month, Raid's got a jam-packed schedule of events to kick off the summer, as well as a load of new content. 
And as always, they've got a bunch of brand new champions coming out and every single one of them looks absolutely badass. I mean, just look at these guys. There's also a new rotation of the Doom Tower, which I definitely want to finish this month. So I'm going to be trying to summon as many of these new champs as possible to see if they can help me reach the top. Where do me and my friends go to play this game? That's easy. Don't you guys have phones? Raid's always got a lot going on, and this month is no different. So don't wait around, and don't miss out. Go to the video description, click on the links, and support the channel by downloading Raid today. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description, or scan my QR code, and you'll get an epic hero, Chonaru, who is amazing in the Doom Tower. 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. I'll just shove it down the back, shove it down the back of your neck. Hold on. This might seem weird. Alright. One take. Ah. Long rest. Long rest. Ha, ha, ha.